So how did you get attracted into clinical pharmacology as a specialty? So would you believe that it started uh, when I was a second year medical student? I suddenly went, uh, uh, was doing my first clinical attachment and uh, was uh, in A&E and this drug addict came in, was completely flat with pinpoint pupils um, and the A&E officer gave him naloxone and this guy woke up and I thought, wow, that's fantastic. That's like magic. And, and that's when my sort of interest in pharmacology started. Where, where are you working at the moment? What's your big interest at the moment? I've uh, got many interests. <laughs> um, <laughs> two main areas. One is drug safety. So um, we have the MRC Centre for Drug Safety Science in Liverpool, which is really looking at uh, the mechanisms of drug safety, trying to define why some people get adverse drug reactions, how we can develop in vitro tests to be able to prevent those adverse drug reactions, as well as develop better biomarkers so we can diagnose them early so that we can actually make drug uh, therapy safer for the NHS, but also for industry as well for future drug development. The second aspect is on personalised medicine. What are the sort of processes required whereby we can make sure that the patient gets the right drug at the right dose at the right time. Um, and again, um, one area that we've been working on recently has been warfarin, which uh, where we've been able to show with the genetic trial that genotype guided dosing is actually better than clinical dosing. How do you see the the future of clinical pharmacology research? Where, where are the hot areas, do you think, in, in the field? I think uh, um, pharmacometrics as a whole is, is actually coming back into vogue. Uh, and it's going to be a huge area in terms of modelling and so on. And I think it is very important that uh, clinical pharmacology, pharmacology is involved in that. Um, I think personalised medicine as an area is going to be very important. And I think pharmacology is absolutely suited to be able to drive that agenda within, within personalised medicines. I think there are specific areas within cardiovascular um, as well as in cancer. Um, and, and infectious diseases where I think, I think pharmacology can make a, a big difference. But then there's also the applied side as well, whereby in terms of policy issues, where I think pharmacoeconomics um, and health services research, and I think clinical pharmacology can make a big impact in that area as well. You, you talked about your MRC centre. Um, what do you feel about the link between basic science and clinical pharmacology? I think it's extremely important that we don't put uh, f uh, invisible walls between clinical and basic pharmacologists. I think we do need to work together and learn from each other and go from bench to bedside, but also from uh, bedside back to bench. Because I think what you learn in the clinic, you can uh, go back and look at it in the lab and refine what you do in the clinic. And I think that's very important. It's a two-way uh, process, and it's hugely important that clinical and basic pharmacologists work together. Tell us about a paper you've uh, published in, in the British Journal of Clinical Pharmacology. So when I was an MRC clinical fellow doing my PhD, my first paper was published in the BJCP. But so, so you're always proud of your first paper. And, and so, so that's my first paper from my PhD, which was published in the BJCP, which looked at uh, why patients with carb, uh, carb maize bean hypersensitivity are particularly susceptible. So I was able to get the cells, look at them in vitro, and see why the cells were dying. And that was published in the BJCP, and it's been cited uh, almost 70 times. So that's always quite nice. Can you think of any other important papers or papers that have been important to you that the BJCP has published that you think are influential? So um, obviously given my area of work which is really focusing on uh, um, drug metabolism, I, I think the BJCP has been very good uh, and very influential in publishing many sort of important papers on drug metabolism which, which have led the field. Um, also on drug-drug interactions. Uh, in a, uh, I remember papers from Alistair Breckenridge, for example, being published uh, on drug-drug yeah. drug interactions in the BJCP, which were very influential in the field, and which have helped my learning in terms of taking things forward in terms of what I do now. Given the, the many things you do and the travelling you must have to do, how do you like to read your BJCP? Uh, I actually read it on an iPad. Yeah. And, and uh, it, it's very easy to be able to look at it because there's some very nice apps out there. I know that the BJCP has produced an app which, is, uh, which has just uh, come out, but there are other apps there where you can actually use to get BJCP articles that you want to see.